This week on Lucky Fish, we put the boat back together and fit a water maker, tour one of the largest sail lofts in the world, get some rope custom made, and meet a couple of famous ladies at Yacht Port. The foremast case on the Tiki 38 is a truss that straddles two beams. I had sent it to an aluminium fabricator to fit new bow rollers, a mount for the electric windlass and a box for the chain. We set about refitting the case. Um, Nearly. Towards me? Yeah, you're there, guys. Okay. Then, like a Meccano set, we refitted the four decks. That work completed, Alan arrived and we began fitting the chain locker, windlass and bow rollers. I'm trying to record as much as I can of the different stages of work. To save some weight up forward, I changed these anchors for a 20 kilo Rockner and a 10 pound Fortress. We now carry 40 metres of 5 16th high test chain and 60 metres of 14 mil anchor plate rowed on the primary. For the Jordan series drogue, I installed two 3 quarter inch stainless eye bolts to take the bridle. These were heavily reinforced to the hulls with hardwood and epoxy. I made a piping bag similar to a cake decorator and injected the epoxy into the holes to permanently bond the eye bolts. I couldn't source nylon road for the drogue locally. Only low stretch polyester or Dacron was available. 
rather than import Nylon Road and pay the duty, it was cheaper to have it custom made locally. Greenwood Ropes came to the rescue. Incredibly, they designed and made a few hundred metres of 18,000 pound braking strain nylon triple braid for less than the cost of buying it off the shelf in Europe or the US. South Africa is full of such pleasant surprises. South African hospitality has to be experienced to be believed. I found myself at the local yacht club on more than one occasion, just drooling over their brides. And thinking how much Zaya and Toya would love all this meat. Beautiful. And here's the chef. Mr. Drew Campbell, who's backlit with a very bright fluorescent light to hide all his ageing. Oh. Whether it was seafood or the local sausage borovores, my new friend Drew really knew his art. What are you cooking there, Drew? Tristan lobsters. Tristan lobsters? Yeah, oh, yes, it's Tristanius. Are they all? It's local lobsters. That's magnificent. Yeah, they, they, they grow in Graf Island as well. Mm -hmm. And that uh, inaccessible and uh, nightingale. Sweet as yeah. beautiful, mate. No, no. And what's the so fish? Got, huh? What is uh, the bluefish. Fish? Bluefish. Southern butterfish. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks gorgeous. Look, Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Apart. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's eat. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> yeah. Help yourself. We needed to upgrade the storm enclosure on the pod and make a trampoline for the foredeck. I engaged Allman Sales to do the work and had a tour of their impressive loft. nesting, he takes the panels and he puts them on the stable. Sure. Okay, here, here you can see the various panels. Wow, it's quite, a, it's quite an operation, isn't it? Yes. More than a hundred sails leave here every week for boats all around the world. They do all the sails for Robertson and Kane's Leopard catamarans and most of the charter fleets around the world. Someone else is making the backing pockets in the Someone else is making the reinforcing in the Some sometimes. Yes. Allmans did first-rate work on our small custom jobs. While in Cape Town, I dropped the life raft off for its two yearly survey and then went to look at water tanks for the new water maker. To make way for the water maker in the port side lazarette, I removed the old 120 litre fresh water tank and replaced it with a 60 litre one from this impressive selection. Then I was able to begin work on the Watermaker installation. I went for a 12 volt unit so it could be run on renewables. The membrane was a snug fit and allowed for convenient positioning of the control panel through the bulkhead into the galley.
Commissioning would have to wait as my time had run out. Round and round and round. Wow. Again, you don't really need that many. Rory arrived from England and got straight to work on the remaining jobs. To many of you, Rory needs no introduction, having sailed the smallest catamaran around the world in the 1990s. To Warham sailors, he is the Warham Whisperer, and I was eager to learn what I could from him. Kangaroo hop. Nice. First, we tightened some lashings. Then check the outboards while the travel lift moved alongside to step the masts. And then all of these bolts eventually will get quite rusty if, um, yep. if they're not sort of taken care of. So. so that's a heavy duty CRC corrosion inhibitor, eh? Like a thick oil film, alright? Well, and I'll probably coat be... the whole thing, but I'll mm. coat the starter motor yeah. and these you know, just a little squirt on each, each yeah. sort of nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And anything that looks susceptible to a bit of corrosion. Yeah. So that, that, that nut oh, that's that down nut. there. Yeah. Okay, that's your anode. So you, you undo that and it withdraws the uh, the anode like a oh, pencil right. of zinc. Oh, yeah. Okay. For, so firstly you would take off these. See the lock, the lock with yeah. the ring nuts? Yeah. You do that one, bring yeah. it down to the maximum. Yeah. And then you just wind this uh, connecting um, uh, nut up so it gets, yeah. starts to go up and releases off this bottom. Because right. that rod there is connecting to the top rod like yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah, that got nut it. just has to go nut. up. Yeah. yeah. And so, and take off these. Uh, Those four, yeah. That's the lower unit. That's the lower unit. It comes all off. Yeah. What you have is you have your shifter rod that's only up to here. Yes. But inside, you've got your drive shaft. It goes yeah. all the way up to the uh, to the to the right. head. Yeah. And you've also got your water tube coming out the back. The main mast had a new tricolour and wind instruments fitted. The hounds received a grind to round the corners that take the wires. Stepping the masts was easy using an arm on the travel lift. Although we must have damaged the new wind sensor wire as the instrument never worked until we finally found the problem in Grenada a year later. Here's the traditional way of using a winch. Look mum, no handles. really got things moving. In just three days the boat had gone from this to this. The day had arrived to put Lucky Fish back in her natural element. It was a few days later than planned and we were really under the pump to clear out of South Africa. 
and meet the girls who were arriving in Namibia in a week's time. Ironically, Zaya's overstay appeal was finally upheld at this time, but it had come far too late, and we were now committed to the Namibia plan. You can see how much work was left undone. The sails were off, the tramp and the storm enclosures weren't fitted, the water maker not commissioned, bow roller assembly needed adjustment, the wind instruments weren't working and the rest of the new electronics weren't tested, nor were either of us familiar with the use of them. However, none of these things would prevent us leaving, so I dashed to the supermarket to stock the boat and we left that night for Cape Town, 100 miles in the wrong direction to clear out. Before we left Yachtport, we said goodbye to a couple of famous ladies in storage there. Golden Eagle was once owned by Elizabeth Taylor. She is rumoured to have lost one of her diamond rings somewhere in the bilge. And anyone who was touched by the story of Robin Lee Graham's circumnavigation, the Dove, will recognise this boat. It's one of seven or eight Lapworth 24s that were built for the movie and shipped to shooting locations around the world. Ah, who doesn't well up when they hear that bit of music? Dawn on the morning after the launch saw us off Cape Town after a good shakedown. Next week, Rory gets lucky fish flying and shares his sail setting techniques as we race against the clock to reach Namibia. If you'd like to see more regular uploads from us, help us replace camera gear, pay for video uploads, then you can become a patron or you can make a one-time donation to Lucky Fish through PayPal. Your generosity is very much appreciated and you'll find links to those in the description below. Thanks everyone and cheers! cheers.